about what you're doing, I can tell that you could actually help out. Hi, my name is Chris Ochoa. I'm here with Will Pines. We are at the UCR Veterans Resource Center and we are here to talk about the job that Will does here on campus, which is... I'm an accessible technology specialist. I work in the Student Disability Resource Center. Thanks for coming in. Bye -bye. So once again, I'm Chris. I did uh, five years in the Army, um, multiple contracts, well, two contracts. The second one I was med boarded from, but I was stationed at Fort Lewis. Did a deployment there, um, really uneventful. Did a second deployment at my second duty station, which was Germany, um, also an uneventful deployment. <laughs> but, uh, why a lot of people join for different reasons? Obviously, you know it's a pretty diverse background in the military. But why? What brought you to the military? Why did you join? And I already always wanted to do. I, I was pretty much in the same boat. Uh, I always wanted to join, and uh, then it just like I don't know. It, clicked. it took a long time though, and then one day it clicked. It's like, what? Why don't I just do it? I, I've always wanted to. I mean, I used to volunteer in grade school up. Every time we saluted the flag, I volunteered to hold the flag every every time. Like they got to the point where they actually had to tell me like, you can't do it anymore. Like, you give us a somebody else a chance. Huh? Yeah, and everyone else was like, no, you can do it. But they were like, no. It was something just I just all wanted always wanted to do. I just wanted to join the military. I wanted to be in the military, I wanted to serve. Um, I, in my 10th grade, I grew up in Louisiana, mm -hmm. um, in a, little, a, small, a really small town, um, we had like 2,500 people. Um, my world history teacher was also my counselor in high school in 10th grade, and she went around the classroom that one, one day and asked, you know, what do you want to do when you, when you leave here from high school, when you graduate, what do you want to do? And I voiced up said I wanted to do I wanted I wanted to go to college but I also wanted to go in the military I just wasn't sure which should I do first or you know yeah. what are the options for me and she said come see me afterwards um, and so I went to her office and she said have you ever heard of the military academy I said sure yes um, and uh, she told me about it and she said um, this would be a great option you could, you could do your military time and you could also go to college at the same time um, and so I applied um, got into West Point and um, I went there for, I was there um, when I was a graduate, actually pick up a little bit. In that time, during the application process, we moved to California, Northern California, so it was summer before my senior year of high school. And I did, I got all my nominations that I needed to get from um, Congress and everything. Um, and I went and I did, went to Beast Barracks um, right after graduation, summer of 89. Go to school, um, had an eye injury, and I was in for aviation, of course. Oh, no. Um, and couldn't pass the night vision test, so um, I was able to go. Oh, I was, my choice was to choose something else or resign my commission, so I resigned because I wasn't going to spend, I didn't want to commit eight years of my life to something I didn't really want to do. Yeah, um, so and I, I think that's a mistake that, uh, I shouldn't say a mistake, but something that really that happens to some that aren't as successful in the military as others. I was at Fort Eustis um, in my first um, AIT, and um, I was a crew chief on Cobra helicopters. Started mm. as a crew chief on Cobra helicopters. Uh, my first duty station was South Korea. Um, I nice. enjoyed it there. I loved it. Um, I took a language class there. I learned how to, I could still read it and write it. Um, I, was, of course, don't have the vocabulary because I don't um, use it as much. Yeah. Uh, but it was a great duty station. I was there for two and a half years. I've heard really good things um, about it. Um, had a great time in Chejido. Um, when I left, when I left there, I went back to advanced aviation um, school for Apache helicopters. Um, kind of the same same job, but we call super crew chiefs. We did um, electronics, communications, um, and weapon systems and electronics. 
on the, on the Unpatch Aircraft. Uh, my first duty station back uh, in the States was at Fort Raleigh. Oh, I'm Kansas. sorry, once again. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, 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 was, it was interesting. It was interesting. I made some, my best, some, two of my best friends are today. We, I met at Fort Raleigh. Um, cool. They were, I had four best men as grooms in my wedding. They, two of them were, the, were, were those two nice. um, there. Um, we still talk a, a lot, um, still. Um, and those are some of the best friendships I've had in, in since I since I since I've been here. Um, so it was great. It was great. Great experience. Great experience. Planned to make it a career, um, but um, when we actually while well, I was up stationed at Fort Raleigh, it was in, in my term, and um, I was up for beat knock, which is basically like it's a um, for if you may not know, it's a schooling for more leadership training, basically. Okay. Um, and so I was already promotable to E six, but I needed that school to get to, to get it. Um, one of the things for what the program they were running at the time was if you re-up for at least two years, then they would pay for six months duty. You take off six months and go to school and they'd pay for it. Of course, in my MOS, that was myself and another person, and we had 21 aircraft that we were responsible for. Um, and he was already up with VDOC, and so they didn't want to renew my contract. They didn't want to agree to let me take that six months. They would lose you. Yeah. yeah. And so I said, well, put it in my contract for the next two, within the next two years I get to go, and they wouldn't do it. And so after that, um, I was able to go back into the regular army. I went back to basic training again in November. Got, like I said, my first duty station was right after that, was after um, we went to South Korea. And just, I say, enjoyed the time I was in. And we are here to talk about what Will does here on campus, which is? I'm an accessible technology specialist. I work in the Student Disability Resource Center. All right, well, so you work in the SDRC, the Student Disability Resource Center. Um, can you please tell me a little bit about what you guys offer there and why you are working there, what you get out of it, as well as what the students get out of it. Okay, great. Um, I'm, let's say, I'm, I'm an accessible technology specialist and my focus is on helping students um, reduce barriers, just as if the, the, whether they're seeing a counselor as a disability specialist, um, when they receive their accommodations. Um, sometimes those accommodations um, can be helped um, or um, say removed or remove some of those barriers yeah. using technology. Um, and whether it's new technology, something that they're already familiar with, um, what I try to do is to figure out ways um, to help them use whatever, whatever they already know to reduce barriers. That could be something as simple as, let's say for a student who um, is, a, is an auditory learner. Mm -hmm. um, if they can get their textbook on their iPad or their, their iPhone and yeah. have it talk and have it read back to them, then we've solved the problem. Right? That's awesome. Um, sometimes, it's, yeah, that. sometimes it's um, other software of, of packages that we have available that we can loan to students or hardware that we can loan to students um, that um, they've been accommodated for. And, um, and I constantly do research um, on technology that's out there to help students. Um, sometimes I learn, I, a lot of the times I learn from the students, you know, what are you using? Mm -hmm. How are you using it? And how is it helping you? Um, and then I try to find similar things to give them more options to, or for me to be able to give other students more options. Maybe a student doesn't have an iPhone or using an Android, which I prefer Android myself, but, <laughs> but iOS, saying, bio, you know iOS is, is, is a great, um, it's, it's a great platform because it has a lot of accessibility built into it already. As far as the office itself, we serve students with um, all types of disabilities, um, whether it's visual or, I mean, um, whether it's visible or, or hidden. Um, some of those hidden disabilities or learned disabilities, things like yeah. that. Um, visual disabilities. Um, uh, speaking of students with uh, being referred to different offices, um, that's one of the things that how I got involved here um, was my, my supervisor, Maria Keller. She was um, kind of like a liaison between the Veterans Resource Center and, and the SDRC. Mm. Um, you know, just like with certain certain students don't want to go into certain places because they feel maybe um i don't know my, my degree may not mean the same if i you know use this service um, and so one of the things that we try to do is to make sure that students you know one understand that your degree still means the same as anyone else's degree no matter what kind of accommodations that you have or services that you may be using um, sometimes it's stigmatism um, whether it's culturally um, whatever whatever the reason may be well I'm not going to go to the student with a resource center I'm not a disabled student. And, and that stigma is yeah. more pronounced yeah. when it comes to student veterans yes. uh, that's a co commonality among veterans right. if, if if you don't have to ask for help or mm -hmm. let's yeah. say if you don't think you have to ask for help right. then you're not going to it right you're gonna adapt and overcome right exactly and I think that's that's one of the reasons why I want to get involved here is because one to bust some of those myths you yeah know, um, because I know we have a lot more, more veterans on campus that could probably benefit from the service. And not only this service, or the service here at the VCRC, 
um, but they are not using it. And there are some other groups yeah. on campus in, in the same boat. And so um, I just want to make sure that their experience here is not as difficult as it needs to be, as, yeah. as it, or as it may be going um, for them. The resources are here. You're, you're paying for it. Use them. Yeah, and uh, and no, no one is going to judge you. Right. Everyone, exactly. everyone, in fact, is probably going to be like, "Hey, let me get the number." Yeah, exactly. yeah. And when I when I started, like I said, when I started this, I was I was when I was when I went back to college, and um, I was working as an English skills tutor, and one of my students has a visual impairment. I couldn't really help her in the lab, and so I went in the lab that I was in, and so I went to the high tech center on campus, and I said, "How can you help me to help this student?" Um, and I learned from the students, um, as far as assistive technology is concerned, you know, what the limitations were, what the positives were f for it. Um, and I married that with my computer science experience to figure out how can I help students. Um, I went from, you know, scanning, taking, taking a student's textbook, ripping it apart, scanning. At that time, we only had scanners at, it's one page at a time. Hell yeah. You scan a page one page at a time. And, um, you know, I could convert it to a WAV format and they can listen to it on their Walkman or, you know, Sony Walkman or whatever. That's um, awesome. And we had, um, I learned how to do Braille there. And so, like I said, I learned just as much from the students as, as they learned from me. How's, so, how's that experience been? I mean, helping it's, out it's, students it's, throughout it's this? Been, it's been incredible because, you no, know, I'm, I'm one, I like, I learn a lot. I learn, from, I learn a lot from them. Um, mm. And so, and... And so as far as I'm concerned, technology is always changing. And so if I don't keep up with it, and not only not keeping up with technology, but what are the students using right now? What are they comfortable with using? Trying to convince them to use something different or something new on top of everything else they've got going on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard sell, especially in a quarter system because it goes everything so much so quickly that you don't really have time to learn something and implement it and try to learn and be successful in class. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I focus on what are you using now, what's working for you, what's not working for you. And we go from there. Ability Resource Center, um, can you please tell me a little bit about what you guys offer there and why you are working there, what you get out of it, as well as what the students get out of it? Okay, great. Um, I'm, let's say, I'm, I'm an accessible technology specialist, and my focus is on helping students um, reduce barriers, just as if the, the whether they're seeing a counselor as a disability specialist, um, when they receive their accommodations. Um, sometimes those accommodations um, can be helped or they removed or remove some of those barriers yeah. using technology. Um, and whether it's new technology, something that they're already familiar with, um, what I try to do is to figure out ways um, to help them use whatever, whatever they already know to reduce barriers. That could be something as simple as, let's say for a student who um, is, a, is an auditory learner, mm -hmm. um, if they can get their textbook on their iPad or their, their iPhone, and yep. have it talk and have it read back to them, then we've solved the problem, right? That's um, awesome. Sometimes, it, yeah, that. sometimes it's um, other software of, of packages that we have available that we can loan the students or hardware um, that we can loan the students um, that's, um, that they've been accommodated for. And, um, and I constantly do research um, on technology that's out there to help students. Um, sometimes I learn, I, a lot of the times I learn from the students, you know, what are you using? How mm -hmm. are you using it? And how is it helping you? Um, and then I try to find similar things to give them more options to, or for me to be able to give other students more options. Maybe a student doesn't have an iPhone, they're using an Android, which I prefer Android myself, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a great, um, it's, it's a great platform because it has a lot of accessibility built into it already. Um, as far as the office itself, we serve students with um, all types of disabilities, um, whether it's visual or, I mean, um, whether it's visible or, or hidden. Um, some of those hidden disabilities are learning disabilities, things like yeah. that. Um, visual disabilities, um, um, learning disabilities. Uh, even a student, let's say any, anyone, any one of us can be um, a part of that, that might, what we call a minority right now. Mm -hmm. If you go outside and for some reason, I hope it doesn't happen, you go outside and you slip, or someone's using, um, running on a skateboard and they fall and break their leg. Yep. They can get services in our office, temporary services from our office, where there'll be transportation or if they mess up their hand or something like that. Um, we can get accommodations for that student um, to help them to make sure they can continue their studies here at UCR. And I know, like, this is something that I, I see in my classes a lot. Um, you know, you provide different chairs and desks mm -hmm. for people with back problems right. or, or even um, longer test times or private mm -hmm. testing rooms right. for people who, you know, they, they can't operate like that in a public forum, you know. Sure. So there, there are a lot of things like that, I assume, that you didn't describe that are still out there. So it's pretty much if anyone 
believes that they might have something they you know they are in need of something they probably are able to find it if they were to seek you out oh, and yes, tell yeah. you what their issue is and certainly there does certainly there's a process um but we we encourage anyone that they, if they you know just like like just like veterans you know we may someone may not be a veteran but they may become friends with a veteran on campus and there's hopefully they were they're referring them to the veterans resource center just like uh, tutoring or referring them to the tutoring center, referring yeah. them to the Student Disability Resource Center, and hopefully faculty and staff are doing the same thing for students. So they go through a process of um, being verified with a disability, mm -hmm. and those accommodations can be, um, can be granted to them. All right, well, well thanks for coming thank out. You, I really appreciate it, and uh, thank you for all you do over there. I can tell that you actually care about what you're doing. I can tell that you could actually help out student veterans as well as just, just students in general. Um, yeah, where, where can we reach you if we need you? Again, we're right across the way from the Veterans Resource Center and the Student Disability Resource Center um, in the Student Services Building, room 1228. Um, you can reach our website at ucr.scrc.edu or you can call our um, landline at 951-827-3861. All right, sounds good, thank you. And, uh, and once again, my name is Chris Ochoa. I'm here at the VRC. If you need any help, come by and see us. I'll be the guy with this.